Chucky is gonna get you. The Chucky is gonna get you. The Chucky is gonna get you tonight. Dun 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 dun. Yeah, you gotta be like at least my generation or up. Otherwise, you're not getting that or knowing what song that is. But, alright, so I know I got the rest of the Saw series to do. I just wasn't really in a Saw mood. So, felt more in a Final Destination mood, which I'm doing the series. So, it's starting now. I was actually in a Final Destination mood like eight hours ago. <laughs> and I got distracted with a whole bunch of shit. It's like four in the morning. 420 almost hit so yeah we're gonna watch final destination from 2000 directed by james wong because i always confused that back when this came out with james wan so when saw came out and it was james wan i was like oh shit the guy who did final destination no that's james wong did this movie not james wan wong wan no good but when this movie came out, like, it was, it was pretty big. Like, this movie was a pretty damn big movie when it came out in 2000. Like, I remember people, like, going crazy over this movie. And I remember this movie made so many people, just like Psycho made people not want to take a shower, this movie made people not want to get on a plane. Like, a lot of people. <laughs> like, I remember hearing that all the time. People saying, like, I don't like going on planes. Like, you ever see Final Destination? It's... <laughs> All the time, people would say that shit. And James Wong, well, I'm pretty sure he was a writer on X-Files, right? Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I'm pretty damn sure. And I know he directed the third and final destination, which makes sense because I really like that one too. But I always go back and forth on which one I like more, this one or the second one. kind of always give the edge to the second one, but this one just has just such a classic feel to it. We got Devin Sawa in here, which it's great to see him. Like, after see, he looks so young in this movie. Like, he looks so young. Like, so young compared to, and I know he had, like, addiction issues and stuff like that, and he was out of, like, not doing any movies for a long while, and we just never saw him. But I'm glad he's doing better, and I'm glad that he's well, got that part in Chucky season two. And now I heard that I'm pretty sure he's going to be in a movie. So good for him. I'm glad, like, he's getting his career back and everything. Because I've always liked Evan Saba. Like, he's great in this movie. Like, really good in this movie. Every time I see it, like I say to myself, he does a damn good job in this movie. And then I kind of forget exactly, like, how good he is. And then whenever I rewatch it, it just hits me again. It's like, yo, he, it, he kills it in this movie. Like, he really does. Yeah, there's some poor line delivery and stuff like that, but... He really sells this character of Alex that's freaking out and like has his premonition and then he's just freaking out all over the place because he doesn't know what's happening to him. He doesn't, know, he doesn't know what's happening around him and he really plays that well. And then we have, what, oh, what's her name? Allie, Allie Larder? Yeah, Allie Larder, I'm pretty sure. We have this, the guy who went on to be Captain America, right? I don't know. I don't. I don't like superhero movies, but I'm pretty sure that's the guy who went out to be uh, went on to be uh, Captain America. Pretty sure. And then fucking Stifler, <laughs> dude. That is such a bad choice for casting. What a terrible casting call. Like, that's why you never saw him in a horror movie again after this, because because he, he's just it doesn't fit. And like every time you see him, it's fucking Stifler from American Buy. Like, talk about typecasting. Like, na and, like rather, it's like no casting now. Cause when's the last time you saw Sean William Scott in anything? It's been, like, 15 years for me. Like, I can't remember the last thing I saw him in. And then we have Tony Todd, which is always amazing and always great to see, even though he has this little part. And it's kind of interesting that there, like, when this movie came out, we didn't really see anything like this before. Like... In mainstream horror, like, because this was real big at the box office, I'm pretty sure it was big at the box office, right? Because I know everyone was going crazy over this movie. So it, I think it did very well. I could be completely wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure. And, but like the whole idea of, you know, death following you around and waiting to fucking fix his little plan and can kill you off because you cheated death. It's a pretty original idea. Has it been done before? Probably, like I say, with every idea, because I don't know every film ever made. <laughs> oh, I can't say that for sure. 
but it's a great concept. Like, it really is. And it really makes for some good suspense in here. Like, when you... The way that they shoot things, that, like, they'll show, well, something moving, and, or from, uh, then you'll think, that, oh, that's going to kill him, and then, like, something else, like a knife on the shelf falls over, and you think he's going to trip, and uh, then it just happens so fast in a way that you didn't really expect. It, these movies are great at doing that. And I've heard people come say this is a slasher film, but death is the killer, that's the slasher. No. It is not a slasher film. Sorry. Like, I mean, you could look at it that way. I don't see it that way. I think that's ridiculous. Like, it's much better just taken as it is with the concept that it has, because it's a great concept, like I said. If I remember correctly, too, this happened... This movie came out, like, right after TWA Flight 800 crashed. If anyone remembers that, I'm pretty sure this was, like, close after that. Maybe a year or two. And maybe that's another reason that it hit people so hard, is that that was a huge plane crash. Everyone remembered that. It was all over the news. So having this movie come out and having a plane crashing at the beginning, yeah, I wouldn't get on the fucking plane either. Man, these are long opening credits. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. I, the, I don't remember that. Like, this goes on and on and on. Like, it really feels so long. I don't know. Observation. All right, any time I hear the lines in an airport, uh, the white zone is for l unloading and <laughs> all of that, the airplane immediately comes to mind. Like, I don't think anybody can hear those words in that line without thinking of airplane. Like, I can't. I don't know many others that can. Can you? Leave it in the comments. Let me know. So I don't know why... All right, so Alex's premonitions and everything, I have some issues with it, like nitpicky issues, like usually, but like when he first starts seeing shit happening, like weird stuff, the first thing he sees is like, you know, the board that shows all the flights and they start flipping around and stuff, and he starts looking very uneasy. Why, though? Like, it, it's just the thing's moving. Wouldn't other people see that? Like, at his back's turn, like, he's talking to the, the woman at the desk. He, like, turns around and sees it. So wouldn't everyone see that? Or is that just in his mind? I don't know. That never made sense to me. <laughs> Stifler. <laughs> Man, Ali Larder was so sexy in this movie. Like, damn, dude. <laughs> like, even back in 2000, I thought she was sexy as hell. And she looks phenomenal in this. And... Her name is Clear. Not Claire. Clear. Rivers. That's her name. Clear Rivers. Dude, like, <laughs> she probably got made fun of so much growing up, but she's sexy as hell, so people will forgive it. Alright, this thing's always bothered me a little bit. They go to take the shit together, Todd and uh, Alex. Because Todd says to him, if you're going to on a seven-hour flight, we're going to be on. And the food we just ate, if it has to come out mid-flight, then the two hot girls that Todd likes and stuff, they're going to walk in after you go to the bathroom. And then, like, all they're going to remember you by is the sting in their eyes and that gag in the back of their throat. All that shit. But then when they get on the plane, it's the same two girls. And they ask him to switch with the other, so she can sit with the other girl. And he says, no, that is, sorry, he has a bladder issue. It's a urinary tract infection. And they look disgusted, and they walk off. So, like, he was just giving Alex shit about shitting. And then, on the plane, he just, <laughs> he embarrasses the shit out of himself. And all they're going to remember him by is urinary tract infection. So, I, that was, that's stupid. I never remember that. I mean, I remembered that. I never understood that. Uh, then again, like, Alex has not had his premonition yet. So why is he freaking out about jo the John Denver song playing in the bathroom? And then he goes like, John Denver, John Denver, he died in a plane crash. Yes, he did. But what does that have to do with anything? Like, why is that freaking him out? He, it's only when he has his actual premonition that he should be, like, really freaking out. And anybody would. Before that, though, like, what is, you, you, it's just a John Denver song. So what if he died in a plane crash? I don't know. The, all his, like, little things he sees before the actual premonition, I don't know. They don't really work for me. I'll tell you, though, 
the way that they film, like the when they're getting on the plane and everything, and it's raining like real bad, and lightning and shit. Like they really sell the message of this plane will crash. <laughs> like it really is effective. Like I don't know. I don't think I can think of any other movie that f just so excellently foreshadows that a plane is crashing. I can't think of one. Like, this does such a good job with making you... I mean, everyone knew this plane crashed. Like, if you saw the trailers back in the day, everyone knew what happened. But if you didn't, immediately you're thinking this plane's crashing. Just by the way they film it and everything. They do so good with this. The French teacher says some shit in French, and he goes in, and they were like, hey, and they were like yelling and clapping. Like, they're celebrating way too early. <laughs> they don't know what the hell's about to happen to them. Okay, right here, Miss Luton is sitting next to some lady. I'm, I guess it could be somebody else on the plane and nothing to do with the school. All right, so never mind, but I do have an issue with the teacher thing. Like, when it comes up on the, I think it's on the news report later. Man, death is a dick. Like, not only does he make this plane crash, he fucks with them beforehand. He gives a bunch of turbulence and stuff happens, and they're all freaking out, and then it settles down, and they go, ah, oh, it's fine, everything's good. Just to fucking crash the plane. Like, <laughs> that's fucked up. If you're gonna kill people, just, just do it. Just crash the plane. Don't fuck with them first. Make them think, oh, we're crashing. Oh, no, no, we're fine. Uh, then do it again and actually crash them. I don't know. De death is a dick in this movie. And all of them. This one, two, three, four, and five. And yet, yeah, 90% of the time, an oxygen mask ain't helping you for anything. Well, you, 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 this crash, <laughs> this plane crashes, any plane, most of them crashes, you're dead. I mean, sure, there's people who survive plane crashes. But in the, in the majority of cases, the oxygen mask is not helping you. And I love the little uh, mini, like, I don't even know what to call it. It's all in one scene. But when the girl, there's like the big ass hole in the plane, the side of the plane that blew up. And she's reaching for Miss Luton. And Miss Luton's like trying to grab her hand. And then she just gets, her chair and her gets sucked out of the plane. Like, that looks really cool. The whole premonition shit looks cool. And then fake out. It wasn't real. It was this premonition vision all right so he has every reason to be freaking the fuck out right now like when if you if i woke up or not woke up but had a premonition like that of the plane crashing so detailed uh, then i got up out of my chair and the two girls said the same exact things to me and uh, then i went and checked the seat and the th the tray the lock for the tray came out and it was broken i'm out like i'm out <laughs> like, that's it. I'm off the plane. Like, I mean, Alex does get off the plane. I have an issue with that, too, I'll bring up. These are nitpicky issues. I adore this movie. But, and I like how Clear gets off the plane. It's like she has some instinctual feeling that, you know, that Alex is right. And she has some, like, premonition-esque stuff that goes on that I really don't care for and that I don't understand. So, because it makes no sense. But I'll talk about that later. And Carter is just a dick through this entire movie. I'm like, what the hell does he have against Alex? I don't get it. He's, he's just an asshole, right? I'm like, that's his whole character. I don't get it. I'm like, he's fighting with Alex left and right. Like, before they get on the plane, on the plane, when they get off the plane. <laughs> like, he just loves messing with Alex in airports, maybe. Maybe it's just in airports. Maybe he doesn't do this in their school. We don't know. We never see it. So I can't guess. Oh, and it's sad, man, that Todd got off the plane, Alex's best friend, to check on him, and his brother stays on, his brother dies in the plane crash. That sucks. Like, that really does. Like, Todd is a really not cool character in this movie. Like, he's, he's just somebody, somebody that you can just really, I don't know, like, I, you just like him. Like, as soon as, like, you see him in this movie, and get to know him a little bit. I just love his character. So just knowing that he's hurting like that after the plane crash, is then you lost his brother... And all the friends that he probably had. I don't know how many he did. Probably had a few. That that sucks. That's really... that That's hard to swallow. Like, for sure. Alright, Carter. You're not losing a whole fucking day in Paris. Quote you. You're losing three hours. 
Miss Luton specifically says when she's saying that there's there's two of us teachers and one of them's got to be on the plane, like with all these students, they're going to Paris for 10 days, blah, blah, blah. Which is a huge issue with that, like I said. But he starts fighting with him over saying that they're going to lose a whole day. No, they're not losing a whole day. They're losing three hours. Last time I checked, there's 24 hours in a day, right? So, it's not a whole day. He's still going to have 21 hours in Paris on the first day to enjoy himself. Except he's not, because he's getting off the plane, or he's off the plane already, and he's going to fucking die later. He's never getting to Paris. But don't they get to Paris in the end? Maybe, yeah, I think they do. So, never mind. I, I love how that... The, the whole scene is filmed with when the plane t is taken off and Alex and Carter are fighting and they don't focus on the plane or anything. And then it just blows up and the windows blow in. I don't know if that would happen. Like, don't they have, like, real strong glass in airports? Like, bulletproof, like, they, they can't break. And that plane was mad far away. Sure, it might be able to happen. If you're a glass expert watching, let me know in the comments if you're an expert on glass. Because I'd like to know if that would actually happen. But I love the whole way they shoot that. Like, just having it in the background, and just then it explodes. And they all look at Alex like they, f they, like they hate him. All look at him like they, and simultaneously like they hate him. And you just saved my life and I'll suck your cock. Like, that's how everyone looks at him. And the way that they did Sawa up... Like, in the beginning here, with all this hair looking just sweat-drenched and stuff on his face. They did a great job. Like, he really looks like he's sweating his balls off. And just in complete panic mode and doesn't know what to think. Great job on that. These FBI agents, the biggest dicks in the world. Like, as soon as they walk in, they, they say, oh, you know, we want to get everything from you guys. So while it's fresh in your mind and, you know, find out if there's any possibility of a criminal investigation. And then the one dude with the glasses looks right at Alex. It's like, dude, you really think this kid did this? Like, and they continue to harass him in this movie. Assholes. All right, huge issue. I've had it for years with this movie. Alex did not get off the plane. Like, the, the FBI agents ask him, you know, then why did you get, get off the plane? When he says that he didn't think it was really going to happen. He did not get off the plane. He was taken off the plane. He was thrown off the plane. He did not get off the plane. Like, get what I'm saying? Like, he didn't get off, the, he didn't just get up and walk out and say peace. Like, <laughs> or freak out and run down, the, nothing like that. He caused a ruckus. <laughs> Can you describe the ruckus, sir? Like, Every time I say that word, you can't think of anything else. Oh, I love that movie. He, but he caused a ruckus. And they threw him out. He was carried out because he was fighting with Carter in the aisle. And they both got carried out by people. That's not leaving the plane. That's getting your ass thrown off a plane. So, big issue with that line. I've had it for so long. Man Clear. <laughs> that name. Her parents must hate her. Like she, <laughs> she has, she, they have to drive her home in the pouring rain. You never see her parents in this movie. Like her parents wouldn't come pick her up or anything like that. And they c named her Clear Rivers. <laughs> so yeah, worst parents award for her parents. That's right. This takes place near Long Island. They have the news report. Long Island. That's where I am from. Represent Long Island. I fucking hate it here. Alright, this is the issue I've always had with the teachers. They say on the news report that 287 people died or feared dead. Then they say that, you know, on the plane it included 40 students and 4 teachers. Now, Miss Luton specifically said to the airport dude, whoever the hell he was, that one of the teachers, half, one, her or the French speaking teacher, one of them have to be on the plane because they have a class of students that are going to be in Paris for 10 days. So she made a whole argument out of that, like if they're the only two, they're the only two teachers. But yet they say there was four that died. So one was the French dude. And then who's the other three mystery teachers? That never made sense. It doesn't make sense. Either Miss Luton's lying just to try to get on the plane, like both of them. I don't know. But... She doesn't seem that way. She, like, she's really, like, arguing. Like, like she needs to be on that plane, or one of them has to be on. 
to be there for these kids and watch them. So none of that makes sense. This is another issue. <laughs> they say that this, you know they do the whole memorial that is 39 days has passed that they lost their 39 loved ones. All right. So 39, they're saying, died. They just said on the news report that a class going to Paris, that there was 40 students and four teachers, which, again, that makes no sense. But that's 44 people. And then, so if it's 40, that's 44 that died, but why is there 39 here they say died? If they're talking about, if, like, they say it, like, 40 are feared dead, or they died in it. But let's just say they're, like, they don't know the people who got off the plane. So we got Clear, we got Alex, we got Todd, we got Carter, his blonde girlfriend, I never remember her name, Miss Luton, and Stifler. Seven. So take seven away from the 39 here, and you got 32. Add in the four teachers, that's 36. It doesn't match 39. Or from the 40, or the 44 that they say on the plane, the 40 students and the four teachers, it's 44. Minus 7 was 30, 34, 40. Damn, man, it's, <laughs> it's fucking late. It's 440 in the morning. Yeah, 37. I don't know. <laughs> 37 is not 39. So no matter which way you do it, it doesn't equal 39. So they got they fucked that up too. I don't know why Todd's dad is so pissed at Alex. He saved his son's life. I mean, yeah, the other one's dead, but I mean, you got one more. <laughs> oh, it's not like you it's not like you totally lost all your money. Like you got one left. And he should be fucking on his knees for Alex. For getting him off that plane. But he's pissed at him. I've never understood that. I don't get it. Like, it's not Alex's fault. So what's that whole animosity there? And that he doesn't want him calling, talking to Todd anymore. And I don't get any of that. I mean, this is stupid. But again, Carter's being an asshole at the memorial with Alex. Like always. So he does do it at school. Or at least outside of school. He's just a total asshole to him. But then he says, like, I control my life and stuff, not you and all that stuff. And then he says, I'm never going to die. And he walks off. Yeah, you are. Everyone dies. <laughs> and you're going to die a lot sooner than you expect to. And again, with Stifler. Worst fucking casting ever. Not ever, but it's so bad. When he comes up to Alex and he's like, asks, asks him some question, like, when, if he knows he's, when he's going to die. And he says, not here, not ever. Again, not ever. Yeah, you will. In a terrible way, too. But then he comes back and for fucking comedic relief. And to, oh, I asked out this girl. Like, is she going to say yes? And I just, oh, yeah, right. Okay, never mind. And he walks. He's so, oh, the casting for him was so bad in this movie. I love their whole conversation here. Alex and Todd, when he's saying, you know, his father is it's just, you know, give him time to get over what happened. And then he's like, hey, when this is over, do you want to, like, take a road trip? And, like, all of that is so good. Like, t the guy who plays Todd, I forget his name, but he, he's very, very good in this. Like I said earlier, you, you really care about that character. So when he dies soon, it really hits like it does. And especially that when Alex starts saying, like, he didn't. He didn't kill himself, because that's what they think happened. It's like, he would not do that. Like, we were making plans before that. Which, yeah, but a lot that happens a lot. Like, even though, yeah, Todd didn't kill himself. Like, death did. Yeah, that makes sense for this in this context. But that does happen a lot. Like, people who make plans with somebody, and then they kill themselves afterwards. I had a friend who did the same thing. Like, to me. He made plans, and then gone. So it happens. Like, it definitely does. But I love that whole conversation between them. Like, it's, it's heartbreaking in a way. Like, when you know what's going to happen to him in a few minutes. Man, this movie is so windy. Like, there is so many scenes that wind is blowing through the windows and, like, curtains are, like, flying around because of the wind. Very windy movie. All right, so the whole issue I have with Alex is 
visions and stuff in this movie. And in pretty much all the movies. He had a full-on premonition on the plane. That the plane was going to crash. He saw it all. And then it crashed. For what reason, we never find out. Like, why he, act, why he has this ability, had the ability to see this premonition. And it doesn't really matter. But then from then on, all he sees is like with Todd, with the fucking, he throws the magazine and Todd, it gets shredded by, the, it, the magazine gets shredded by the um, fan and then it just leaves a little word of Todd on the, on the little piece of paper. Like, why doesn't he have full-on premonitions of everybody dying? He, d he had one with the plane crash. So I don't understand any of that. And I kind of don't like it. <laughs> like, I feel like they could have done a little better with how Alex knows that who's going to die. And how he, like, how he sees it. It's not, it's not really a big knock on the movie. It's fine. But could have done a little better. But right here, like what I was saying earlier, the way that they build up to the deaths in this whole series is so good. Like, they do such a great job in, like, every movie with that. We just went in Todd's bathroom when the toilet starts leaking and stuff, and then you say, uh-oh, or then, then he gets, uh, the, the windows are blowing in, you know, or blowing the curtains, so then he starts shaving, and you're like, oh, shit, something's gonna happen with that, and then he starts with the, with his nose hair clipping and stuff, like, the way that it keeps building like that, and, like, you're thinking, all right, what's gonna kill him? Like, how's he gonna die? is so great in this series and I think that's a big reason why this was such a big franchise like it, they handle it so well and then the John Denver song Rocky Mountain High comes on again which we hear a few times in this movie awesome like that whole scene with Todd before he dies <laughs> after when he that whole scene happens and it's not good because I, I love Todd but when he's still alive and they're building up to it great scene Man, that's such a great scene, but it's such a sad scene, dude. Like, that is a sad death with Todd. Like, when he fin we finally see how he's going to die, and he trips into the, you know, on the water shit that came out of the uh, toilet, slips on that, and then the, whatever the hell that is, cable, the wire, fucking wraps all around his neck a few times, and then he starts just, his eyes turn red and everything. It's so sad, but it's done so well. Like, if that makes sense. Like, great scene. And they deem this a suicide. Do they not look at, like, his his feet are, like, sticky and shit? That he, like, slipped on whatever the fuck that was? Then there was shampoo that spilled in the bathtub. Wouldn't they see that he's slipping and stuff like that? They don't, they don't think that maybe he slipped and this happened? Like, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, not at all? Like, just it's a suicide. Like, that's, I feel like they do that a lot. In real life. Like, well, we don't know what really happened here. I mean, it seems like it's so just fucking suicide. Write it down. Seems like that's what they do sometimes. Like when, And it's sad. Because it's not a suicide, obviously. And then the whole thing with the blue water shit or whatever it is. Going back into the toilet. Like, get the fuck out of here. That's so stupid. I don't know why they did that. Like, yeah, I get it. It's death. But, like, is death really spending its time after killing somebody, cleaning up the bathroom? Really? Like, I think death has better things to do. Like, kill the other people that he has to kill. And this day and age, death could be a she. It could be a he-she. It could be whatever you want it to be. I'm just, for simple reasons, making it just simple, death is a he. From, from the beginning of this and going onwards. And then the two FBI guys show up at Todd's house and see Alex. And the guy with the glasses gives him a fucking deep-ass stare. It, oh, I, I just don't like it. Every time I see this guy, I just want to take him to the zoo, open up a cage, and throw him in with a gorilla. And have the gorilla rip him apart. Yeah, they say gorillas aren't like that, but if you've ever seen the movie Congo, some are. So... Get a Congo gorilla in there is what I'm saying. Get my jump scare gorilla. If, you, if you've been watching long enough, you know what I'm talking about. Get the jump scare gorilla, silverback gorilla, put him in a cage with this guy, and have him just have a blast. Have him shit in his hand and throw it at this FBI dude. And then just, like, just proceed to just rip him apart. Every, I don't know, maybe it's a little harsh, but every time I see this guy, that's what I wish happened. 
And if you don't know what I'm talking about with uh, the Silverback Gorilla jump scare, you haven't been watching JT's horror discussions enough. So get back on some of my uh, my back catalog. Not alike. I love. Oops. I love when <laughs> Alex goes to clear, and she's like, you know what this is? Like a little it's not sculpture, I guess, but like it's made of a whole bunch of shit. And he's like, this is a uh, springy head guy. <laughs> That's great. Springy head guy. It's a great first thought to have. And then she says, it's you. I'd be like, this don't fucking look like me at all. This is springy head guy. I already established that shit. This is springy head guy. This is not me. Make up your mind, Clear. Yeah, so Clear's entire thing with saying that, like, I didn't see what you saw, but I, f I felt it. Like, and I, you, I still feel it, and I know you still feel it from that day, and all of that. Like, why? Like, does she have some power, too? Like, none of that's explained, ever. With Alex, it doesn't really matter. But with Clear... <laughs> that name, man. That's Clear Rivers. Can you imagine? That whole thing with her, like, psychic, clairvoyant, whatever the hell you want to call it doesn't make any sense to me unless it's just a deep 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 gut instinct but I call bullshit on that bullshit but I do still adore this movie who when they break into the morgue clear and Alex and they see uh, Todd's body clear comes out and says like oh why do they do him up like Michael Jackson I mean funny yeah but his best fucking friend, man. Like, he just died. Not the time to be making jokes like that. Like, you know me, I'll joke about anything whenever. Not when somebody just died. That's like, that is the only line for me. And oh, not, not really. <laughs> like, only if it's like a friend or a, your, a friend of yours is family or a friend of theirs or like somebody you know personally. If you don't know them, fuck them. I'll make a joke about them. And all I can say, Tony Todd, kills it, like always. Just his voice alone elevates this movie, like the few scenes that he's in. But Tony Todd kills it all the time. But just his voice, like that was such amazing casting. But yet they, they screwed up so big with Stifler, which... <laughs> With fucking Scott. I don't know. I don't, they have an amazing casting right there with Tony Todd. And then just... But I mean, look. It's Tony Todd versus Sean William Scott. I mean, come on. Like, who's winning that one? Yeah, I don't even have to say who it is. It's Titty. Two T's. And even though I, I have been, like, bitching... Not bitching, but, like, nitpicking certain things about, like, the whole way this all works... How, like, how does Tony Todd's character know anything about this? Like, how does he know that death's after them and that it has a plan and that... All of that. Like, how does he know anything about that? Like, that's never explained or anything. But it doesn't have to be. I like how ambiguous a lot of things in this movie are. Even though I do, did nitpick on a little bit of them. Like, we're clear mostly. I, but I do like how ambiguous it is. And, like, just... I, we don't need an explanation. Just, like go with it because it works and it does plus if tony todd ever tells you to do something or tells you about something you listen because <laughs> that man is never wrong listen always just like when i was saying oh what the hell was it oh in uh, my day of the dead video when i was saying always listen to a jamaican always listen to a jamaican dude they are never wrong they're never wrong. Make sure they're real Jamaican. Make sure they're not a fake Jamaican. Wearing one of those, the hats with the dreads. I got one over there. I don't know why. But I said that in my Day of the Dead video. Always trust a Jamaican. They are always right. Same with Tony Todd. Trust Tony Todd with everything in your life. Because this man is never wrong. So just take whatever he says and, and do it. Or just figure it out, whatever he's talking about. Because that man is a genius. And then Alex and Clear are sitting there, and the, he sees the bus go by in the reflection of the glass of some store. And then we get that great scene coming, like the, the blonde chick's death. But yeah, just the whole premise of this series 
and concept behind this and the whole idea of cheating death and that they were supposed to die on the plane and because they got off now death has unfinished business with them and that's why it's coming after them and killing them one by one it's such a great concept it's such a great premise for this movie and that launched like the little franchise it did like it's it's something you don't see like i was saying at the beginning of this video it's something you do not see often if at all so i mean i i miss this series i honestly do this is going to be fun going through all these movies and i cannot wait for the sixth one i know they announced it i don't know i don't know if it's, it's still in if they filmed it yet or if it's in pre-production or i have no clue but I'll look into that because I really want to know because I really would love a Final Destination 6. I like how they they all show up like Luton and Carter and the blonde girlfriend and fucking Stifler. They all show up there so they're conveniently all in one place so it, they make you think it could be anybody. I mean, come on. <laughs> Dude, I laugh every time that chick gets hit by that bus. <laughs> every single time. It's hysterical. When she just turns and she walks into the street and you know what's happening. Like, they showed the bus in the reflection, that the vision that Alex had. You know this bitch is getting hit by this bus. Like, you know it. Like, it's so heavily foreshadowed. But when it happens, it's just, it's, it's great. It's, but it's hilarious at the same time. Because we don't know nothing about her. Like, we, she has no character development in this movie. Except that she's Carter's girlfriend. That's it. And, but I just noticed this. When she, before she gets hit by the bus, when she's walking, there's a big-ass tractor blocking the road. That's where the bus comes from. So where did that bus come from? Like, watch, watch it, if you don't know what I'm talking about. Right before she gets in the, in the street, they show like a shot of her talking, and right behind her is the direction the bus comes from. And there's a big ass tractor or something, or like some vehicle blocking the whole street. And then the bus comes from that direction. So they messed up there. It's also a clever idea, too, of when he traces off, the, when they're showing like the position that the, you know, the direction that the explosion went on the plane. And he says, like, that's Todd's seat. And then he gets the tracing paper and he traces it out. And then we get the whole idea shown here that. That could be, the, the, you know, when they're going to die. The order they're going to die in. That's cool, too. That's a very cool idea. Even though I don't think, I didn't pay attention, but I really don't think, like, when they show it on the TV and then when he draws it, like, it doesn't look like the same path at all. Like, it's, it's similar. I could be wrong. I don't know. But it, every time I see this, I notice that. And I, then I just forget about it. So who knows? I'm not going back to find out. Like, are you serious? No. Not going to lie, though, I mean, you know how I hate these FBI agents. Mostly the, the white one. The black dude's cool. Maybe he's Jamaican. You trust everything he says. But he's cool. It's the only, and he says at one point that, like, maybe he's right, like what Alex is saying. It's just the, the white dude with the stupid glasses because they're, like, oversized. And I think that makes him look weird. Trust me. But he does look guilty as shit. When he's outside of Miss Luton's house and he's, like looking at her car and stuff underneath it and I guess he's trying to check the brakes and stuff like that and make sure nothing happens I don't know but he looks guilty as sin when they drive up I mean if you were an FBI agent and you think that this kid could possibly be responsible for their plane crash somehow I don't know why they think he's responsible and then the death of two other people one being hit by a bus that has nothing to do with him so that makes no sense either but then he, you find him messing around underneath the car of another person involved, you look guilty as fuck. So, got to side with the FBI on that one. Miss Luton puts the record on, John Denver. The lesson of this movie is never listen to John Denver again, or you will die. <laughs> like that's, that's the message from this movie. John Denver died in the plane crash, his ghost came back as death, and if you listen to his records, he will kill you in a, in a terrible way. Thanks, John Denver. Again. Going Dahmer on, your, on you guys? What the hell does that mean? Dahmer was a serial killer. 
a plane crash here, and then other people are dying in weird ways. That's a weird line. But again, this entire scene with Luton is excellent. Just the way, again, how they just build up to it. And she has the, the tea kettle and stuff, and you, that starts going off. And then everything, like, you just, everywhere you look, and they show something, it's like, is that what's going to kill her? Like, and the way they handle that in all, most of the things in these movies, because there's some, like, in 4, pretty sure it's 4. 4 is not that good. I pretty much love the first three. Five is decent. Four is just not that good. So I don't even remember four, actually. So I can't comment on it until I rewatch it. But I remember it's not great at all. So, But th the way they do this in every single one, like in, in the next movie, when the, guy, the guy's getting out of his burning apartment and he goes down the fire escape and he, he, there was like a piece of, there was spaghetti that he threw out earlier and then he slips on it and the ladder comes down and right into his eye. That's great. But I'm going to repeat this in the next video for uh, Final Destination 2. But that is so cool. And the way they handle that and everything here. And just like the close-up shots of when she uses a match to turn the, turn the oven on. It's just shot in such an ominous way that it's like they, they, this movie could, and this series can make anything seem like death is coming. And that, it's excellent because of that. And I like how Alex, when the FBI bring him in again, when they say, he's telling him, like, you know, just, can you promise us that nobody else is going to die? And I love how Alex says, no, I can't. Like, as long as I'm in here, then I can't, I have no control over it. Some, and, he, and then they let him go. For some reason, I've always liked that. Yeah, then right here with the, the black FBI agent. When he's saying, like, the kid freaks him out. And he's saying, like, because there were there was some moments there that, that, I, that I believed him. And then the white dude is a dick, like always, and, like, says whatever he says. Like, just degrades whatever he said. Asshole. But love that whole little bit of dialogue from Black Dog. Black die. That sounds wrong. Black guy. And if, like, you stumble upon the channel and you're, like, a woke person and black guy offends you, then get to, just get the fuck off the channel because you're the last person I want here. Yeah, and, like, the whole... Oh, I just love it. How they just keep going with it. That you see the, um... The coffee mug breaks. and cr I mean, cracks. And then the water's dripping as she's walking with it. She don't notice that. I mean, maybe, but come on. And she's walking with it, and it drips down onto the TV, and then it's just you don't know what's going to happen. And I don't want to keep repeating myself, because, I mean, that's going to be like every single death in like all, the whole series. But, ah, oh, I love it. And then the TV just explodes, and the glass goes into her throat. I don't think a TV is just going to break like that and explode. I mean, if you're, if you're a TV expert, also still a glass expert, let me know. If you're a... If you're a glass expert who specializes in TV glass, that very, very, very niche profession, please let me know. But damn, it's effective, man, when she's walking around and her neck is just bleeding everywhere. Like, it looks really good. And then the plate just starts going on fire because of the vodka bottle. Va va yeah, I said vodka, right? Fuck you, it's five something in the morning. Vodka bottle. And then it explodes or some shit, and then it's on fire. Great scene. And then when she goes to reach for the knives, and, or the rag, and it pulls the rack of uh, knives down, and the one just lands right in her, like, oh, what a terrible death, man. Like, oh, can you imagine? You have a knife inside you, your throat is cut and bleeding, and, and your place is on fire. <laughs> Getting stabbed has to suck. Having your throat fucked up and bleeding like that's got to suck on its own. And everyone knows they don't want to burn to death. This is all three in one. Like, oh, that's terrible. Oh, yeah, I forgot this. And then something happens that knocks the chair over, and the chair conveniently, like, lands right on the knife and pushes it down more. Into <laughs> oh, what bad luck this woman has. Like, death is so messed up to her. Like, it really fucks with her. Like, it's, like, going to give you the worst death possible. The only thing about this scene, he gra why does Alex t grab the knife? Like, why? Like, if you ever come across or go to a house of a friend or something like a family, and, they, and they're laying on the floor, 
stabbed with anything, you never pick it up or touch it or for any reason, like at all. <laughs> like you just don't do it because then your fingerprints are on it. And then you have to explain a whole bunch of shit that you don't know. And you look guilty as hell. So never pick up a knife or anything like that that's stuck into a human body. It's my point. Never. <laughs> that's right. Cle Clear's uh, father died. So I take back half of what I said about her parents being terrible parents. Even though her mom did like leave her with her stepdad that she hates. So I guess it still applies. I mean, the father died, so you can't really blame him for anything. But they both, I'm guessing together, decided to name her Clear Rivers. So, fuck you, dead dad. It, it's still, you're still guilty. And then Clear goes, fuck death. That's right, Clear. That's why you're the only one alive in the next movie. Oh, Stifler. Well, when they're saying who's next and asking Alex, well, please tell me I'm going to see the Jets win the Super Bowl. Are you serious? Like, oh, he's one of the only terrible things in this movie is, is Sean William Scott. I've said it enough, but he is one of the biggest negatives in this movie for me. And this is like the only time that Carter is like semi nice to Alex, like in the car when they're talking about who's next. Yeah, because Carter is only nice when he might be dying. Like, that's it. Like, besides that, he's just an asshole always. Asshole always, Carter. And then straight back to Dick. <laughs> when he starts speeding up in the car and, like, risking everybody's life, trying to see who's next. And oh, I, I hate his character. I mean, this is a small little dig, too. But how does Alex, like, see those visions like the bus going by and then what he sees in the car he's, he's always looking in that direction like when it's there like <laughs> that's funny like it, like he's looking in that direction he just happens to be looking at the the reflection on the store glass and sees the bus and he just happens to be staring out the window at that moment to see that little quick vision of i don't even know what it is it's like the little uh things they put to block off stuff like block a road i don't know that's what it looks like but he was he happened to be staring out the window at that exact moment like i said it's stupid and it's just it's a funny nitpick but i noticed it and be like this guy's always looking in the right place man like gee, he's good and i really like the whole scene here on the train tracks when uh carter's like just sitting there on the train tracks waiting for the train to come uh, then he just, like, realizes the way that Alex is acting and stuff. He's like, it's not my time. And he tries to get out, and he can't get out. And uh, then just the whole way that that plays out. And then they pull him out at the right, like, right at the last moment because his seatbelt broke. Uh, then Alex realizes that he messed with Death's plan. And that it should have been him, Carter. But it wasn't because we have Stifler, who his character in American Pie... He's obsessed with sex and getting head, and the writers just decided to give him head decapitation. <laughs> and it does not look pleasurable. Like, at all. One bit. Nope. But yes, this is dead. <laughs> I like when Carter, he's just like, you're the fucking devil. <laughs> That's a great line. God damn, man. Like, like I said earlier, well, not in this video, in the first part, Sawa just kills it in this movie. Like, I, I know some people that don't care for him or don't think he does a great job in this movie i think he's excellent in this movie like i couldn't think of anybody else to play alex in this movie but devin sawa and he's just like when he's going off and just like he sounds like a like a mental case but he's right like what are you just going if i if i see it then then i can intervene if i intervene then i can and just the whole way that whole speech by him is excellent totally excellent and all right, this is what I'm going to do. Because I, I've said this before. The only reason I don't edit shit together if this happens is because I have very good editing software that I never use. Be but the f one or two times that I did splice two videos together, I guess because of the length of my videos, it takes like six, seven hours to process like the edit and stuff, like that file. And 
and work. Like it takes hours and hours and hours. So I don't want to wait. Like I just want to get shit up for you guys like immediately. So if anything, I'll th I'm, I'm gonna post these two and uh, then uh, let it sit and uh, do its thing for six seven hours and then I'll up that one and delete the other two. So that's what I'll do. Thinking out loud. Well, I'm talking, so talking out loud. While thinking. And for some of my new subscribers lately, if you're not used to seeing a lot of my videos, welcome to the channel that has no production value and doesn't give a shit. So, hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> and this shit, it rarely happens, even though it happened two in a row now with, <laughs> with these, with Saw 6 and this. But it always happens when there's like 20 minutes left in the movie. And then this part two ends up being like 10 minutes or 15 minutes. It's always the end. Like, it never happens halfway through. It doesn't happen like 15 minutes in. No. It always has to be right at the end when the video's going fine. I think everything's good. And then, fuck you, says life. <laughs> and it just messes with it. This is like the fifth time it's happened. But, I mean, five out of like 400 videos, that's not too bad. But I, I will edit this one together. Because I love you guys. Kiss three. This F, these FBI agents are really terrible at their job. Like, they're, they're staking out Claire's house. And he's like, I just saw her. She was there a minute ago. And she just walks up on the car, like right next to the white, uh, white dude FBI agent. What if they were staking out a murderer? Or like an armed suspect or something like that. He would have walked right up on him and they would, he could have stabbed this guy right in the throat. Like, they don't have good situational awareness at all. And then I like how he locks himself away. Like in his in this little cabin hut. Or is it her? I think it's Clear's like family cabin or something like that. I don't remember. I was too distracted with being pissed off that the video stopped. Well, I stopped it by accident. But still, I'm pissed at myself for that. But then he remembers that he didn't move so his seat was in front of clears and now he realizes that she's next that's a cool little reveal there and i really love the feel of this movie and like the, how it looks and how it was filmed like it it has a 90s feel to it still cuz this was filmed in i'm guessing 99 i don't think it was film, filmed 2 years ahead you know in 98 and then released in 2000 like i'm sure it was 99 so it was in the 90s and it feels that way still. It has that, like, late 90s transition into the new millennium time feeling. If that makes sense at all. It has that feel to it. And I really enjoy that. And yeah, see, this is going to be like a seven-minute video. So, <laughs> got a seven, six, seven hours to edit shit together. Edit the two of these together because of seven minutes. That's chopped off the end of the first video white person YouTuber problems. Then like a squad of the FBI show up, like a shitload of them and they're running, chasing Alex through the woods and the stupid white dude with the glasses that's been bugging him this whole movie screams out, Alex, we're trying to help you. Yeah, if I had like a whole patrol group, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, a whole group of FBI agents chasing me through the woods, I'm running too. Like I'm running away. Because that doesn't seem like they want to help you in any way, shape, or form. Aw, cute doggy. Alex gets squished by a Christmas tree, almost. Looks like one. And hey, he finally took his glasses off, the prick uh, FBI guy. Good for him. And this whole near-end thing with clear, with the lightning, with the cable that's sparking and everything like that. She's climbing on the house to get in, like... It's meh. It always has been for me. Like, it's not that great of an ending for this movie. I mean, this isn't the end, but... It's, like, near the end. And it's never really done it for me. It's not bad or anything. It's just... It's, it's fine. Like, it's just... They've done so much better and so much more creative stuff in this movie. Up until this point. And then this is just, like, kind of... Whatever at this point. Like, I don't know. Something about it just doesn't hit for me as well as the rest of the movie. I don't know if it's because it's so it's fucking almost six in the morning, but 
he throws the shovel and the shot of it is like it, it's twirling right towards you and it kind of made me go like, it made me jump <laughs> for a second like almost it looks like 3d like the shovel was about to hit me in the face made me jump like that that's odd yeah, Alex grabs the cable and the car explodes and he survives that explosion. Get the hell out of here. Six months later, and they're going to Paris finally. And they they got back on another plane? Are you, are you serious? They got back on a plane. After all of this that just happened to them, they would be the last people on earth to get on a plane again. But there's no problem. They just got on a plane. Are you serious? Like I said, there's a whole bunch of people that won't even get on a plane without, like, near death and getting off a plane and, it, and then it explodes. And then they decide to go back on another plane. I don't care if I had to rowboat to Paris. Are you serious? I would never get on a plane again after going through what they went through. And Alex even nonchalantly says it. He's like, I can't believe we got on a plane again. Uh, I'm like... Ha ha. He didn't really laugh, but it's like, come on, man. Like, really? They got on a plane? It's just to get them to Paris so one of them, so Carter can die, right? Right. And Carter is now a changed man. He's not mean to Alex anymore. He messes with him a little bit, jokingly, but that's the story of the love story between Carter and Alex Browning. And they lived happily ever after. Because Alex starts talking about and bringing back up the, the plane crash and stuff after they just got off a plane. <laughs> and starts talking about the path of it and stuff and saying that he intervened with and saved Carter's life. And Billy was the next one and he died. And then she, he interfered with Clear. And then it skipped her and went to him. But then he didn't die and it skipped him. And then like, who's next and all of that. And then <laughs> they're just going to all die. After Clear starts saying, maybe this is the whole plan all along. Maybe this was death. Maybe this was the design. That the three of them were meant to live out of everybody on the plane. I mean, I guess you could hope, right? But <laughs> not what we see at the end here. See, this is what I mean. Because then Clear sees the bus in the reflection. Just like Alex did early in the film. So what is her reason for this? Like, why does she see visions and stuff? I'll never understand it. It makes no sense, and it, it didn't have to be in this movie. It is cool, though, when the, the sign, the neon lights sign that says 180, swings down and almost kills Alex, and then Carter moves the metal away, and then the whatever it is comes down and kills Carter. And then it's just Alex and Clear left. A great couple, but the ending of... Uh, that's the end of the love story of... <laughs> of Carter and Alex because he's dead so he moves on quick and he goes right to Claire and then Claire is in like a padded room in the next one and stuff and we find out Alex died and they don't even bother like bringing him back for like he didn't want to come back or something I don't know the whole story behind that but what a classic movie man like this is a movie that just every time I watch it it brings me back to like that time period like the early 2000s. And it's very nostalgic for me, this movie. And the next one, too. The third, fourth, and fifth one, I don't have as much nostalgia for. Because, like, I... I don't know, the years went by and everything, I guess. But I love three, like I said. Four is just not great. And five is decent. That's how I remember them. So, it's going to be interesting rewatching the rest of these. But this is an absolute classic early 2000s movie with a great premise and is handled so well. The only negatives I can give it, besides my nitpicky stuff I always do, is I don't like the whole thing with Clear's visions. It makes no sense. And fucking Stifler. Like, that's basically it. Like, there isn't much else that, like, is a negative, like a real negative for me. Except for that. And the, the dickhead FBI agent. But, I mean, he took his glasses off finally, so he's seeing clearly now. <laughs> but seriously, great movie. So, can't wait to do the next one. Final Destination 2, but I still have Saw 7, Jigsaw, and uh, Spiral. I don't want, I'm not looking forward to Spiral. Love the other two. So, I don't know what I'm going to do next. Tomorrow, probably Final Destination 2. 
maybe do Saw 7 and then Final Destination 2. So I can finish up that one Saw while I'm, you know, starting and getting into Final Destination. So, yeah, great rewatch. I always love rewatching this movie. And it's always great to see Devin Sawa, like, back in the day. And he just kills it in this movie. So, that's Final Destination 2000. James Wong. Not Wan. Wong. Ching Ching Wong. <laughs> that's from a movie. I, I can't think of what. But I can't think of much right now. It's like 6 in the morning. I haven't slept. But, where, hey guys, wherever you're from, I hope you're having a good morning or a night. And I will talk to you guys soon. Take care.